Welcome friends. I'm Reverend Cheryl Bolton. I am the minister at the Glencoe and Appen United Churches here in southwestern Ontario. We've been gathering together here for mm, almost five months now online. And for the most part, this has been my studio, my home office. And we've touched in a few other places at, as well. And somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago uh, what it said actually on the wall behind me because you can't always see it because my head gets in the way. So for those of you who have been curiously turning in every week to see what it, figure it out what it says, it says, happy is a home that shelters a friend. So welcome friends to my home. Have you ever been given a task that's so overwhelming you don't know where to start, and so you don't. Sometimes it feels like that when you're in ministry or in any job for that matter. Sometimes things seem too large for us, but God gives us abundant love, abundant grace to do the task which he has set before us. That's what we're here to remember today. Please. Join me in worship. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to this place with different needs, some of us wrestling with problems that threaten to overwhelm us, some of us crying out for healing, for relevance, for refuge, some of us hungering for what God alone can provide. In this time and in this place, God is here and meets us face to face. Amen. Yeah, the apples high. 
Let us pray. In the darkness of night and the brightness of day, you, O Lord, are present to us. As we wrestle with situations which seem to drain us of our energy, as we struggle to find out who you call us to be, you reach out to us with reassurance of empowerment and courage for the days ahead. Calm our spirits and prepare our hearts and lives to receive your awesome grace. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. such a treat. There are thousands of people as far as I see, but the only food for miles around has come Scripture reading today is from Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. And if you didn't guess by that previous song, it's Feeding the 5,000. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve basketfuls. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women, and children. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So at the beginning 
of this service, I mentioned overwhelming tasks. That mountain of paperwork on your desk, a building project you've been putting off, a 20-page essay. Oh, I still have flashbacks about those. Tasks that you are so overwhelmed with that you keep putting them off and you put them off and you put them off, only exasperating the, the problem. You try burying your head in the sand. Or maybe you try to give the, jan the job away or simply walk away from it. I know more than once in seminary, I wanted to walk away from an assignment. Heck, there are days that I wanted to walk away from seminary. And sometimes it would be so bad that I couldn't write a single word. Writer's block. Every student's worst nightmare. One day, while I sat at the end of the hall in the little seating area at Emmanuel College, staring blankly at my computer screen, overwhelmed by the task at hand, and a looming deadline, of course, a wise graduate student said something to me that I will never forget. Just write something. Anything. Type your name. Write something totally unrelated, whatever pops into your head. Just write and trust that God will guide you. And she was absolutely right. God had dragged me kicking and screaming into a task that I thought was too difficult for me to handle. But God didn't just drop me there. God saw me through it. God took the small offerings that I had and he grew them and me into the servant that God needed me to be. Christ's miracles about loaves and fishes is a reminder that God is not only moved to meet our human needs, but he's able to as well. Have you ever wondered why loaves and fishes? The story reminds us that Jesus was powerful and that his miracles reflect God's intent and ability to feed people. And I'm not just talking about filling their bellies. Jesus didn't feed the bellies of 5,000 folks, but he fed their faith as well. He banished hunger of the masses, and he banished the doubt in his disciples. In this story, it's still relatable today. It reminds us that when God asks, gives us a task to do, with God giving us a task to do, he will equip us to do that task. And those wise words come tumbling back. Trust that God will guide you. But that's not all that this story reveals. Not just to have faith in God, for God to help you do the task, but it also reminds us that Jesus did not act alone. Jesus did not gather the loaves and multiply the loaves and distribute the food to all those people by himself. He asked his disciples to bring what they could find. He took, the, took what the disciples found and he, they brought it to him. And Jesus blessed it and broke it and gave it back to them. Christ's disciples gave the food to the crowd, enough to satisfy everyone, and even more. Could Jesus have done that all by himself? Definitely. But that's not what he wanted. Jesus chose to perform this miracle with the help of his disciples. The story reveals something crucial about discipleship, that it requires Christ's followers to get out there, to be involved in the work that Christ is doing, to encounter people who hunger, who hunger not only for food, but for, for understanding, for meeting, meaning in their lives, for justice. Christ's disciples are challenged to reach out to the hungry 
and also to trust that when we reach out, we'll have something to give. Yesterday, I was feeling overwhelmed by an incredibly busy week, and I was having a difficult time moving forward. I was having a hard time doing anything, and so I reached out. Those who follow my Facebook page saw my plea to post a picture to help me smile. And you did. I loved those pictures and comments, just as the little boy offered his two fish and five loaves to feed the hungry souls. You shared your pet pictures and pictures of children and grandchildren to feed my hungry soul. So thank you for your discipleship. Each one of us is essential in doing God's work in the world. And when we turn the news on and we see all the horrible things happening in the world, the task seems overwhelming. And we just want to walk away. We feel we aren't equipped to handle the job. But that's okay because we don't walk alone. When God blesses the gifts he gave us, God multiplies those gifts and gives us abundance, an abundance of love and grace. Trust that God will guide you. Those wonderful wise words. Accept the miracle that God provides you with and be so bold as to imagine what God is leading you to do. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to God for his abundance. Amen. And God bless.
Let us continue in prayer. As the crowds follow Jesus, eager to be filled with hope, we come this day to this place, seeking nourishment for our souls. We hunger and thirst for the word of hope and truth. But our lives are battered by anger and hostility. Our hearts are filled with concerns for family and friends, for our country and our world. We don't see how we can be of help to others. Sit us down as Jesus seated the multitude. Calm us down as Jesus reassured the disciples that all would receive care. Lift us up as Jesus encouraged others to reach out in compassion. Give us hearts of confident faith in your presence, O Lord. Place your hands of healing on the many situations which we name in our hearts. Lord, we ask for your merciful goodness for these situations and for these loved ones. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today in worship. And I hope you have found God's abundant love and grace in this service and given you strength for the days ahead. Peace be with you. And now may the Spirit send us forth to serve. Go in peace, knowing that God will always be by your side in all that you do. Go in love, offering healing and hope to others. Go in joy, that others may be lifted and inspired in service. Amen. Amen and peace. Till next time.